Sebastian, thank you very much. This is um, this is a really an honor. Uh, I'm a long, uh, lifelong Seattle resident, um, and uh, I've always lived right down the street from UW. So um, it's it's a privilege to be able to present to the UW family um, uh, alumni as well as uh, some of the, the folks that currently uh, work there. And uh, you know, my wife went to school there, and my daughter is on the pup squad. If if you're familiar with that. Um, uh, cheerleading at halftime on basketball games and football games. So uh, definitely uh, uh, have a lot of uh, affinity for UW. Um, I'm going to apologize. <clears throat> I have the same cold that everybody else seems to have, and it is cresting right now. <laughs> I'm at the peak, so I'm going to be drinking a lot of honey tea through our presentation and maybe a few coughs here and there, but I'm, I've, I've been uh, trying not to speak too much today because of this presentation. So uh, big apologies there. Um, before we dive in, uh, I need to read a compliance statement. Uh, they require that I state that the opinions voiced in this webinar are those of the speaker, Jaime Suarez. Uh, opinions are expressed for uh, general information only, and they're not intended as specific advice or recommendations. And obviously, this is important because, you know, when I speak to a crowd, we're talking about generalities. Uh, which can still be very good information, but uh, we have folks that come from uh, different uh, professions. Uh, we mm -hmm. have folks with different uh, income ranges. And uh, the specific advice that I would give uh, one person versus another person, one-on-one -on -one would be probably different than I would to a general crowd. So I uh, just keep that in mind uh, for, um, you know, as, as we're going through some of this information, but you're always welcome to ask. Uh, like Sebastian mentioned, if you have specific questions, feel free to ask, and you can always email me at offline too, because I know some people don't like to uh, speak up in a crowd, even if it's online. Um, and uh, and no question is a bad question. Um, you know, I, I hear a million different questions about a million different things. So any question is a good question. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, our, our presentation today. Um, uh, in our agenda, we're going to talk about retirement savings mantras. We're going to talk about five steps to help achieve retirement savings success. And we'll also talk a, a little bit about how much money will you need. Um, retirement and, and, and even finances in general, they can be complex. Uh, but uh, I'm really happy that UW is uh, bringing this presentation to your workplace because it is complex and, and we need, uh, you know, we need a lot of information, especially as the world continues to change and get more and more complex. Uh, finances are the same thing. They're getting as complex as technology and, and everything else. So um, I really appreciate that UW is, is uh, bringing this presentation to a, a lunchtime event. Uh, So let's talk a little bit about um, some of these mantras. Uh, so as you see here, this is not new news. Uh, we all are very familiar with uh, um, uh, inflation. Uh, costs continue to rise. Uh, can you tell me, it looks like I might be, okay, I'm sorry, I'm on the right screen now. Um, costs continue to rise. We, we've seen firsthand how inflation has affected uh, prices. So this is not, uh, projected to to ever end. It, inflation is part of, of how we live and, and how our economy works. And um, obviously, we've seen a lot of it in the past uh, handful of years uh, with some of the effects that you know the economy had. Um, and luckily, it's it's been slowing down. But the future, you know, if we go from 2022 to 2052, it's going to continue. Uh, you know, if, if you don't like five dollar gas. Uh, you probably aren't going to like eight dollar gas either, <laughs> uh, and movie tickets. You know, can you believe it? They might be a, a quarter of a hundred bucks someday, uh, but it, that's just the reality of of how things work. Um, you know, it's really interesting. On um, you know, if if the two mantras that are really really important for us to talk about are going to be saving as early, and also as much as you can. And, and these are really important for a number of different reasons. But, you know, I've been a financial advisor for about 20 years, uh, a little over 20 years. And I've seen a lot of situations, financial situations, and, and how people's lives have been affected. Uh, but these are two things that I've, even before I ever saw this presentation, I've tried to point out to folks 
Um, and I understand that when a person is first getting started, maybe they're, they're, they're first entering the workforce or they're uh, fresh out of uh, university, um, you know, there can be a lot of startup costs. And that can include things like, uh, you know, going out and meeting people, uh, dating, uh, going to restaurants uh, and spending a lot of money there, uh, having nice clothes um, and, and a nice car. Um, those are some of the things that a lot of people tend to put at as the most important things. And I understand why, because, you know, we're, we're just starting our lives out and you probably have to get furniture as you get into your first apartment or house, things like that. But I've seen a lot of situations where uh, maybe people got hurt uh, and they weren't able to perform their jobs again. Um, I have one client who was coming home from being out uh, and she uh, lived on the second story and somehow she fell off the balcony uh, as she was opening her door. There was probably some foul play or something that happened to her, but she fell and hit her head and she's um, recovered quite a bit, but there's just this lifelong um, you know, uh, cognitive issues that she continues to have. Um, and, and so, that, you know, I have another person that um, uh, he, he was working on a construction site and somebody from up and up, up high in some scaffolding dropped a cult gun on his head and he was wearing a ha hard hat, but still that was it. Uh, he could not go back to work and, you know, uh, much less all the health issues of headaches, lifelong headaches and migraines, um, shoulder issues, back issues, just a number of different things. So, you know, it's easy for us to make projections for how much money you'll need, but these are the sorts of things that we can't measure of, of what could happen to a person. And if they didn't start early, if they didn't um, save as much as they could, you know, um, some folks, well, you know, the first situation that I mentioned, the first uh, example, she was able to go back to work, but probably never going to excel like she would have. So her income is her income. Uh, in the second situation, he just couldn't work anymore uh, and he and he can't save anymore. So he has what he has. So those are some of the reasons that um, this sort of thing is, is really important. Um, another situation, I, you know, I recently met with a couple that they've been clients for years and years and years, and they had told me they were getting close to retirement. We we thought we had two more years, but one meeting they sprung on me that they were ready to just, they were done. And they just felt like they needed to stop working. Uh, so the original plan was two more years, but uh, they said, no, it's, we, we just really, really want to wrap it up. But the other thing that they mentioned to me was not only they're going to work less, but also, oh, we want to have a second home as well, which obviously is very costly. So um, what flashed through my mind, this was last year that this happened. So those are big, you know, changes to our financial plan. But in addition to that, last year was a down year uh, or, you know, the year before. So I immediately started to worry about something called the sequence of returns. And what the sequence of returns is, is basically saying, if you retire... <laughs> in a time when the market is going up and you start to take withdrawals may not be a big deal if, if we've done our, our job right now, uh, but what about if the market's going down at, and you're taking, you have, you start out with the exact same dollar amount and you're, you're withdrawing the exact same amount. You could end up with a completely different result of how much money you have uh, in 10, 20, 30 years. And so, well, these are the sorts of things that I, I think that are real important for folks as they're thinking about the mantras um, and they're thinking about, you know, starting earlier, because especially for you folks that are in your 20s and 30s and even 40s, uh, sometimes you have no clue where, uh, what, you know, what you're going to be doing or where you want to live when you're in your 60s, you know, what, what sort of situation you're going to have. So, it, but I mean, you know, in this situation, even fifty-five-year-olds uh, were uh, were um, uh, changing their mind at, at the last minute about when they're retiring and and uh, and uh, you know what um, where they wanted to live, how many houses they they wanted to have. Uh, I've I've seen folks that retire and then all of a sudden there was never an, an RV in the plans, but then it just springs up. Hey, you know, we want to buy a fifth wheel uh, and tour the country. 
you know, as you start to mm -hmm. really focus on developing your retirement plan. So uh, the more you can save, uh, the better and, and as early as possible. So let's talk a little bit about uh, five steps. Uh, um, so number one is going to be choosing your savings vehicles as you are saving money and, and also the product. Um, also be aware of changes and take advantage of any opportunities that, that might present themselves as you're going along. Uh, increase your saving rate whenever possible. Uh, don't forget healthcare expenses and also seek professional advice as you need it. Uh, and, and I'm going to suggest lots of different kinds of advice from different professionals and, 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 as, and, and often as well. Uh, so uh, when we're, when we're looking at some of these uh, different vehicles and products, uh, you know, let, let me make sure we're on the same page. The vehicle is something like a 401k, but, or, or this could be uh, your UWRP, your PERS, uh, VIP accounts like that. Uh, but when you open those up, then you have the products inside of there. You, you have uh, this fund or that fund. Um, so uh, both are important uh, to look at. Uh, so it could be, uh, again, UWRP, VIP, uh, there's IRAs, and then there's traditional, uh, uh, which is pre-tax, and then the Roth options as well, which are after tax. And uh, one of the nice things is over time, um, these products have been changing uh, a bit. So now we see that in some products, there's not only after tax in some of these vehicles, there's not only after tax in some uh, um, of these um, uh, vehicles, there's also uh, Roth options. Um, and, and, uh, and, and then we're also seeing a change in products. Some of the laws have been changing in, in recent years uh, that we'll have new, uh, more and more products available within uh, some of these different types of uh, accounts. So in a, in a 401k, 403b, uh, pre-tax type of accounts, again, I mentioned uh, some of the, uh, you know, some of these accounts that you have available at, at, at UW. Um, uh, money come, goes in on a pre-tax basis. So if you make $100,000 mm -hmm. and you shift 20000 in here, uh, you only get taxed on the 80000 that you put in. That 20000 has not been taxed yet. And hopefully over the years, it grows and grows and grows somewhere down the road as you pull it out, it does start to get taxed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, some strategies and, and, and uh, a bigger uh, picture of how that works in, in a little bit. Um, so any investments that are in there are growing uh, tax deferred and are compounding over the years. So that means that your interest is, or your earnings are earning earnings. Uh, so it helps it to, to balloon, uh, balloon over the years. Employers often uh, match your contribution up to a certain percentage. This is kind of some of the, 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 the intro stuff that we're talking about here. So you put in money, they put in money into some of these products, not all of them. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, some of these vehicles. Um, oftentimes you, you have mutual fund investment offerings. And again, that's uh, over the years that you may see that changing. It might maybe more than mutual funds, uh, but um, um, uh, let's see. Um, and then the withdrawals are taxed at income tax rates as you pull money out. So that's really something to, you know, you really want to dig deeper into these bullet points and make sure that you understand them or that you're working with a professional that understands these things. Because uh, sometimes you, uh, you, you don't realize uh, how your tax bracket changes the more money you pull out from pre-tax accounts. And that can mm -hmm. be costly in taxes in the future. Um, and also, to, you must be over 59 and a half to avoid early withdrawal penalties. There's some uh, sub rules there that I won't get into today, but um, that's kind of the general uh, rule of thumb. If anyone's going to retire early, earlier than 59 and a half, that's a good conversation to have with your financial professional, because sometimes <laughs> there's uh, ways around the 59 and a half rule. Uh, there's sub rules uh, and sometimes. Um, so IRAs is another place that folks have a lot of money, and uh, typically that's used as a rollover, a place to roll over money from. So from a 401k, 403b, if a person ever wanted to move it out of those types of accounts, um, it would generally land in an IRA. That way it doesn't get taxed when you move it. You're still bypassing the taxes. Um, and then your, your accounts are held at a bank or an investment firm. Um, and when you use an IRA, depending where you go, because I've seen some places where 
so let's say if you go to a bank, like a, just a traditional banking side, uh, and this is where um, you'll find that, you know, we don't call our, in my department, we call ourselves BECU Investment Services because we are a different department than the banking side and we can do additional products. So on the banking side, you'll find that they do CDs and savings accounts, even inside of an IRA, that, that's what they offer. In our department, it's uh, more like this example here where you can get into a whole world of other types of investments. So um, if you go, if your investment per, a professional is a real, uh, I'm sorry, a, a, an insurance agent, they may have certain limitations to what they are able to invest in, just like a bank might. Uh, so it just really depends. So um, good thing to know uh, what options are available to you as far as investments, uh, depending where, where you uh, have your IRA. Um, and then with, uh, gosh, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised. My I'm no coughing yet. So this is working out okay, much better than I, I feared this morning. So... <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, with I IRA accounts, again, a, I'm going to put an asterisk next to this one. Contributions can be tax deductible. They aren't always. Uh, and so um, this is something you tend to see also for folks. You know, I won't get into it today, but, you know, some folks want to invest in a Roth IRA, which we'll talk about in a second, and they make too much money. Um, if they make too much money, they generally don't get a, a tax deduction on their IRA. Uh, and so for folks, if, if, and there's another rule that says if you have a, a workplace retirement account, um, you, you, you generally don't get a, a tax deduction on an IRA. So there's, there's a lot of details here again. So that's where if you're looking for specific situations, you know, I'm talking generalities now, um, some people may, some people may not get the deductions on an IRA. So that's that's where you talk to your financial professional to figure out what your situation is. Um, and then uh, again, in an IRA, um, you put it, you put in your your money. Let's say it's seven thousand uh, dollars, and it just grows. It's not being taxed as it's growing. And then down the road, it's uh, you earn some good money. As you pull it out, it gets taxed. Um, at whatever your tax rate is that year. So imagine a situation where um, uh, not only are you still working, but you all, you're also pulling money out of your IRA, assuming let's say you're 60 or, or 65. Um, this is going to stack on top of your income. And what if you're already getting a pension from another employer uh, or you're also collecting Social Security because you decided to take it at 62? your income is probably up here. And now you're taking money out of an IRA on top of that. Um, that that could be a lot of taxes. So keep that in mind with IRAs. Um, so catch up contributions. So generally, again, you know, you can add money to uh, um, the 401ks as well as IRAs. Um, and with Roth IRAs, uh, some companies now are starting to have Roth 401ks as well. Uh, what you do in a, let's say a person wanted to contribute to a, a, a either their just regular uh, a workplace retirement account and or in addition to that, a, a Roth uh, option inside their workplace place retirement account, that doesn't mean you can't also contribute money to a, a Roth IRA or traditional IRA. And uh, this is last year's limits. So you can still contribute to, for last year uh, up until the tax deadline. Um, um, so last year, uh, it was 6,500, uh, uh, with a catch-up contribution. If it, um, but, um, there's a thousand dollar catch-up contribution this year, it's gone up by 500 bucks, uh, what you can contribute. Uh, but, uh, inside your workplace retirement account, just the standard per person can contribute up to 22.5, um, and, uh, and, and, uh, max was, uh, with a catch-up contribution was thirty thousand, so an, an extra seventy five hundred for if for folks that are fifty and older. Um, but there's multiple places that you can put money, so that's something to keep in mind because I hear that a lot. If somebody contributes to their uh, 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 Roth four hundred one k, let's say, sometimes they think they can't also do a Roth IRA. But the more money you're trying to tax shelter. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good conversation to have is where are all the places that you're, you're not necessarily limited 
just because you have a Roth 401k or a, or a pre-tax uh, uh, retirement plan at work, you may, uh, you may also be able to contribute to uh, a Roth IRA and or a, a Roth um, traditional IRA as well. So let's talk a little bit about, besides putting money into investment accounts, let's also talk about um, the rule of 72. And so this is, a, I think this is really, really good, especially for folks that are really want to have safe investments. They don't like to take a lot of risk. So this, the rule of 72 basically tells you how fast your money will double. So let's say you have a $50,000. How fast can I expect it to get to a hundred thousand? Well, if you have an investment that's earning 10%, the rule of 72 says you take 72, you divide it by 10. And so that means seven years. In, 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 ten, in seven years, if you're earning 10%, your 50,000 will be 100,000. This is the important part. Now, luckily, we can actually see 4% uh, investments that are fairly safe these days. But, you know, obviously a few years ago, that wasn't the case. So it was even more painful, painful than this. But now if you're earning 4% on your investment and you take 72 divided by four, it's going to take you 18 years to, to uh, for your money to go from 50,000 to 100,000. Uh, so that's why people take more risk is because here your money is not doing much work. It, it, it's it's just going to take a long time to crawl up to doubling, uh, 18 years in this situation. Whereas the folks that are comfortable taking more risk, um, they could see uh, uh, it doubling a lot quicker. Um, and so what that means in real life terms is if your money's not doing the work, that means you probably have to save more or work longer if you need uh, the equivalent amount of money as this person here, uh, because their money is doing more work for itself um, and your money is a lot more sluggish of, of doubling, then that means it's okay to be conservative, a conservative investor, but you just have to realize what that means. Uh, that, that, that means you, you may have to work longer, spend less or save more. Hey, I mean, can I, Jaime, mean, can yeah. I bug you on that one? Um, and this might be in your presentation later presentation. today, but does age have does anything to do with risk at all? It can. It, um, yes and no, because I've seen some folks that they just are aggressive investors, even when they get into their 80s. That's just their thing. They understand it, how it works. They may not need access to their money. Um, they have other monies on the sideline. Um you know, they have, they're not big spenders. And so we still have to worry about a few things like, you know, will they need long-term care and where will that money come from? So, you know, that, that's where a good financial professional will set some money on the sidelines and in some safe, safer investments. But I still see some 80 year olds that are, that are pretty gung ho with investing. Um, other times I see 40 year olds, which uh, sometimes the, what I'm hearing from them is my parents said this. And so that's why they don't have the appetite for risk or, or they just want something really, really steady. Um, and so it can, but it, it, you know, in any good uh, financial plan, I think we do want some money on the sidelines, um, uh, you know, for, you know, for different situations, uh, especially as, as folks age, you know, I, sometimes I, I have to talk folks to let, you know, less risk. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's another interesting little thing, though, kind of like a side note. Sometimes people tell me they are a conservative investor, um, but um, then they tell me they're buying crypto or, or, or that they're day trading stocks. So that to me doesn't match up with what they're telling me. So it's it, this is a really, really good um, conversation to have with your financial professional because um, we really need to try to figure out, you know, because if you're doing that, then maybe I need to adjust somewhere else if you truly are a conservative or, or moderate investor. Yeah. Um, so in addition to that, uh, increase your savings rate whenever possible. I think a good rule of thumb is, is uh, you know, one of the nice things with your workplace account is you, if you get a raise the next year, let's say you were contributing 7% to your retirement plan. And because you got a, a raise the next year, 7% is a bigger dollar amount, right? 
Um, what I'm seeing is, is outside of work, if a person is putting money into a, a, a just a regular investment account or an IRA, um, it doesn't automatically go up because you're not, you know, if, if you set it up to to put in a hundred or five hundred or you know, five thousand dollars a month into an investment, um, I think it's a good rule of thumb that you know on, on New Year's Day or or some day like that to increase it up, even if it's five dollars or or you know or twenty five dollars, uh, but that'll that's a good habit to build. I think to automatically put it on your calendar that increase it every once a year uh, with the assumption that you made more money and and that even if you're doing these little incremental um, additions, um, you, you know, you won't probably miss five bucks or 10 bucks um, a, a month. Uh, and so it, it, it just automatic, uh, it's not automatic, it, but it just helps you to save that much more and you, you may not even feel it. Um, so look to also to cut, cut down on non-essential expenses. Hey, you know, again, asterisk next to this one, we have to live, we have to have some fun in life. So, uh, but, but where's that line? Again, I think about when I was younger and again, I'm trying to date, I'm trying to, um, you know, look a certain way to, to, to date. Um, I, you know, I spent a lot of money at restaurants and it's not that I didn't save money, but at, at the same time, um, I wish I would have put, a, you know, had something in place because I didn't know any of this stuff when I was younger, uh, just like a lot of other folks. So I wish I had a little bit more automatic uh, things in place and, and and to understand just, you know, saving some money before I, I, I spent it. And in addition to my, what I'm doing at work. Um, uh Let's talk a little bit about um, healthcare expenses. And when, when I say healthcare, this is this is two different things here. So number one, it's going to be um, regular healthcare expenses, like when we go to a doctor, we have to pay a copay, or maybe something is not covered fully by insurance, and we have to pay for that. Um, well, that's one thing. Uh, that's a regular healthcare expenses, but it can also be long-term care. And so we all know what happened with long-term care a few years ago with where, you know, we, we had to get long-term care insurance, uh, some kind of coverage. And so what ended up happening is a lot of us kind of jumped into a product um, that, you know, that, you know, did a quick assessment, bought, uh, jump, jumped into a product, and it may or may not be the best uh, investment for you or best in type of insurance for you. So I'm, I'm suggesting to folks to do a re uh, refresh on that and go back and, and review. Is this something I'm, I'm that what I'm buying into to get away from having to pay the tax? Um, is it the right product for me? Or is there now that I have more time to assess because they do allow you to switch whatever product that you bought into um, that's part of the law that says what you have what you what you bought into doesn't necessarily mean that you have to keep that forever you can switch into another product and and that's okay um it, i'd say re refresh uh you know do re redo your search on this and and just double check to make sure your product is the right thing for you because for some folks um there might be something completely different that makes sense for them uh, but it's just that you know we just jumped into you know what what was available to us at the time and what was easy uh just because this all happened so quickly um but keep in mind with long term care um there a lot of our long term care is not covered by a medicare and so a lot of times, most long-term care, especially if you need a, a lot of, uh, you know, this, this is covering things like um, if, I, if, I, if, if I can't, um, you, you know, clean my home anymore, if I can't get uh, in and out of a chair or in and out of bed, if I can't bathe myself anymore, that's long-term care. And that's a whole different expense. Maybe I can't even, I can't take my own medication anymore. Um, I need somebody to make sure that they're on top of that. And maybe I get to a point where I'm, I'm forgetting what I'm taking and, and what I'm not taking, or, or it's just hard for me even to take my medication. Some people get to a situation where they, it's hard for them to swallow or just a number of different things. Um, imagine getting in and out of the tub, how dangerous that is uh, when you, you, your mobility uh, starts to fade. Um, and so um, that's long-term care. And again, it's, it's generally very, very little for a very short period of time is covered by Medicare. 
uh, when you get to age 65 and over. So that's something to, um, you know, you have to factor in some of those expenses in addition to your regular doctor bills and regular uh, co-pays and what have you. So the next question is, well, how much money will you need? You know, the, the, again, this is a general rule of thumb, which I'll put an asterisk next to. Um, 75 to 85, 80% of your pre-retirement income, um, you know, that's what you may or may or may not need, but this number is really, really going to change. Again, my, my client that, that, that told me, um, I'm, re I'm retiring and I want to buy a home, you know, this is kind of out of the blue, you know, well, you know, now they have a mortgage payment every month uh, for that. So that's going to be a whole different number. And the question is, do they or do they not have their primary mortgage still? Um, so you may need to save less. You might be lucky enough where you do need uh, less than that. Uh, if you have a mortgage that's going to be paid off, which let's talk about that before you ever pay off your mortgage. Let's talk about that, especially if you have a, you know, a 3% mortgage. Um, that's a big conversation because those are obviously long gone and and uh, 3% is a nice low number. So um, that's a really important conversation. Um, if you plan on downsizing to a smaller home with a different mortgage payment, yeah, you might need less. You know, if you're if you're paying uh, 2000 a month and now you only need 1000 a month uh, or, or you get a brand new 30 year mortgage and now it's down to 500 a month, uh, you know, that's that's less money that you'll need. Um, if you plan to uh, relocate to a less expensive city, uh, I've seen that happen a lot where folks say, hey, I can live a much better retirement somewhere else in a different city with, you know, my money will go a lot farther. My, the, my, the house will cost less. It could be in or out of this country as well, uh, where the cost of living might be dramatically cheaper. Um, and if you plan to work uh, part time during retirement, then you're going to need less money as well than than uh, 75 or 80 percent of your income. Um, and then sometimes uh, you might anticipate other sources of income, such as maybe uh, you've gotten, if you have rental income, let's say, and over the years that rental income has been going up. Uh, um, that's the hard part sometimes to, to really, uh, uh, you know, some folks that get into rental income, sometimes they, uh, they can get a little depressed because um, they say, gosh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just making ends meet with this rental, but down the road, as they raise rents, it's, it's a different story. Um, and then your social security benefits uh, at some point will be coming in. Um, and then uh, maybe the kids are out of the house or, or uh, maybe you were helping out with a, a family member and then uh, the, they no longer need that support. Um, that can also help to, to save some money. Um, but what if what if you you have the opposite situation? So what if you have that you had a second mortgage? What if you want to kick off your uh, retirement with a lot of travel? Um, with some projections, people say I want to buy a car. I want to buy a car for my child. I want to travel the you know the world or at least to you know take the family on a cruise. Um, maybe uh, you buy into long term care insurance uh, uh, with, with a lot of upfront costs. Um, so it, it uh, maybe I've seen this a lot also. Uh, please be careful about starting your own business after you've worked so hard to save this nest egg. Uh, if, if it's something you you know a lot about, but I've seen people sometimes say, I want to start a restaurant and they have zero restaurant experience, but that's what they want to do when they first retire. So you have to be really, really careful. It took a long time to save your money, uh, but just real, be real careful about some of the things that you um, uh, do in retirement, uh, you know, some of the ventures you get into. Um, maybe you, you uh, gosh, this is a big one here. Back in 2008, for, uh, for, the, for those of you folks which uh, were already working, um, I had a lot of clients that retired in that range. Some of them were more than fine when, when uh, 2008 happened, the financial crisis. And, you know, it didn't affect them so much. They, maybe their investment account went down, uh, but it wasn't going to affect them day to day or, or month to month because we had money on the sidelines. Um, but what we saw is that their kids were losing their jobs and their kids were losing their houses. So the parents were saying, I need to pull out money to help these kids because otherwise they're going to be in a really bad situation. 
And so if, 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 and I also saw some kids that moved back in with their parents and not just the kids, but also their, their boyfriends or girlfriends and, and possibly their, their, their grandkids as well. Uh, so, um, and obviously there was, uh, you know, a lot of folks had a hard time finding a job at that time. So uh, if, if you have any kids that you ever feel are, might someday need your support or again, parents as well, um, or relatives, um, that's where you, you could, uh, you may need to save more uh, to, to cover for some of that. Um, so additional uh, steps to achieve uh, uh, saving success. Um, number one, seek uh, professional advice if, when, and how you need it. And this is from a number of different uh, financial professionals uh, as well as legal professionals. Um, um, Sorry, I thought there was another bullet point there. Um, this is something I really like to go over with a lot of folks. And um, this is something that I think doesn't get talked about that often. Um, so when you have money and you put it into different investments, this is a classic example, I think, of where I think a lot of the, the news and magazines and books that we have out there that speak to financial advice, a lot of times I think that they speak to stocks and bonds and just basic um, investing advice rather than um, tax planning strategies or, or kind of bigger picture thinking. And here what we what we have is, you know, a, lo a lot of folks, they are focused right here in this bucket right here. And basically, when you put money into PERS, TERS, SERS, uh, UWRP, uh, a lot of your different retirement accounts through work, as well as traditional IRAs and other uh, sorts of IRAs, a lot of times when the money goes into that, it's pre-tax money. So again, I, that example where if you make 100000 and you save 20000 into this uh, one of these types of investment accounts, uh, you might only pay uh, taxes on your 80000 because you shifted 20000 into one of these. Uh, but then again, over time, this money is growing. And so your bucket of pre-tax money is growing, but it, so is your bucket of taxable money because it turns into taxable money at some time uh, as you're starting to take withdrawals from it. And so you kind of have to strategize that I put some money in here and it's a lot bigger now um, how do I get it out of my account? Because the more I pull out in any one given year, my tax bracket could jump up and it could jump up significantly. So, uh, we have another type of bucket, and that is if you have money that you get into your savings or checking account, and now you take that money and you just put it into regular investments, whether it's CDs, money markets, stocks, bonds, but these are investments that are not inside of a a tax sheltered account like a, a, a UWRP or, or PERS or 401k type of account. Um, you're just buying a mutual fund or, or, or real estate. Um, you pay taxes on these um, oftentimes every year, uh, your dividends, your, your, your income off of that rental or, or, or your gains. Um, so when you sell it, you also pay the, the capital gains uh, possibly most of the time often. Um, so the money that you put in there was already taxed, but you're earning interest, you're earning uh, dividends, you're earning income off of this. So that gets taxed uh, oftentimes every single year uh, as you're going along. And then you have your other bucket up here um, where it's your, uh, your tax friendliest investments. So here's your, these are after tax contributions. Again, same thing. You earn the money and went into your savings or checking. And then you say, hey, I qualify to put money in a Roth. I want to do that. Uh, or a Roth 401k or, uh, um, you know, uh, maybe a permanent insurance, municipal bonds. There's, there's a number of different investments. So this money has already been taxed. You put it in there. And if you do everything right, follow all the rules, uh, it, it can be tax, they can be tax-free withdrawals. Um, so again, um, that $100,000, again, not that you can put that much money into all of these products, uh, definitely not a Roth IRA. But let's say you put that um, 100,000 in here and it grows and grows and grows. Down the road, if whatever it grows to is income tax-free. Uh, and, and so 
what we tend to see naturally, because a lot of people have retirement plans at work, and that's where the focus is on savings and, and also on saving on taxes today. Um, a lot of times, this is our big balloon account. We might have some money here and we might have some money here, but usually this is the oversized account. And, and, and for a reason, because again, we're trying to get those tax deductions, but it's going to come to fruition at some point. So you have to have a, a tax strategy too. And so this to me is part of the big, um, should be part of your, your thinking as well is if I'm doing this, is this the right strategy or should I focus here? Maybe some folks, I, I see a lot of folks that come in right before they retire and they've never done a Roth IRA. And they've never contributed to one of these. And so in their final year or two, we contribute to these because uh, a lot of the times they've never been uh, working with a financial professional. They've just been working and this was what they had at work. So this is what they did. Um, so that's why a lot of times this is where the most of uh, people's money is. Uh, but but thinking, but thinking about it this way, Hopefully that plants a few seeds of maybe there's another way for me to do this. Yes, I want to do something here, but is there a strategy for me of uh, maybe doing this stuff a, a long way too? But maybe after, you know, there might be a, a, a time and a place for me to start shifting money around. Um, you know, how, you know, when and how do I do that to, to you know, get myself in a better uh, situation than just having one big balloon with um, a lot of taxable money. And here's just one last thing. Um, keep in mind that our taxes went down a handful of years ago with a, a, a law that was passed. In 2026, that law is over. Uh, at the end of 2025, it, it, it uh, moonlights and starting in 2026, uh, we're slated to see our tax brackets jump up a little bit. Um, and, and I would assume at, at that point, Congress would do some things, make, you know, uh, at, maybe change, uh, add a new law, but what are they going to do? Uh, we don't know. And are they going to agree uh, to the changes? You know, we don't know. But right now they're slated to go up a little bit. Hey, Jaime, um, we have a question in the chat, actually. Um, the yeah. question is, uh, is the limit on a 401 or 403B, the same limits as a Roth IRA or a 401 Roth, or any, or, or do they have separate limits? Separate limits, yeah. Then a Roth uh, 401, uh, I, I'm sorry, then a Roth IRA and Roth 401, uh, I'm sorry, Roth IRA and um, yeah, 403B is going to be different. Thank you. I hope that uh, answers the question. Yeah. So I just want to uh, talk a little bit about our department, um, BEC Investment Services. Um, so we we help with a lot of different situations. Uh, just today, I got a call from a, a person. This is not the main thing that we do, but she got uh, something in the mail and it said, please report this on your taxes. And she thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to owe a lot of taxes. Um, and that's not what it was at all. It was what's called a 1099-R. But she um, just panicked immediately when she saw it. And so uh, through a lot of uh, questions, I was able to figure out what she had going on here. Um, in her situation, she's just not, uh, she, finances are not her thing. Um, her brother-in-law does her taxes for her, but she just got this and immediately uh, her emotions went from zero to 10. Um, so what, through probing, I was able to, to explain to her, no, this is, you just have to report this. You're, this is not a... a uh, um, this does not mean that you have to pay taxes. It just means that you have to report this and then, um, uh, you know, then, then you just file your taxes, but it, you know, once you do your taxes, you'll know if you owe any money or not, but uh, it was a big investment that she had. So it just, it, it just really, um, um, made her panic a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we do have everything from, um, talking about retirement planning, uh, we talk about, uh, you know, we do measure uh, how much, uh, you know, you might need for retirement. Uh, we do for retirement projections um, uh, and financial planning. But I think that along the way, sometimes I'll notice a lot of things that people are doing and I'll make suggestions about. Um, uh, I had a, a person I spoke to yesterday and they call, they told me I want, uh, my wife and I want to contribute to uh, a, an IRA. And um, I told them, well, 
just like we've been talking about before, he has this humongous 401k. And I told him, well, you already have a lot of money there. Uh, we we talked a little bit about, you know, how that's been growing and it's going to project it to continue to grow. And so that taxable bucket is going to grow more and more. I was able to suggest to him, well, I understand you want to lower your taxes now, but we also have to think about the future. What if we contribute to Roth IRAs for, for the future? But your wife, she's self-employed. We can also contribute. Uh, you may also be able to contribute. I'm not a tax advisor, but you may also be able to contribute to a, a SEP IRA uh, and that'll help lower your taxes. So it'll offset um, that you're not getting, a, you, you, you know, people don't tend to get deductions for the Roth IRA, but by contributing to a SEP IRA, that, uh, you know, the general rule is that that can help uh, lower your, your, your taxes, uh, speak to your tax advisor um, um, uh, for details. Uh, but uh, that was able to help him say, oh, yeah, that sounds like a much better idea. So that's the tax, uh, you know, that's that's financial planning advice, so one of those sorts of scenarios. And then especially when I do a retirement projection for folks, um, when they see how their money grows in 10, 20, 30 years and their how what their buckets of money look like, taxable versus not taxable, that can really help a, a person say, oh my gosh. And then especially now, uh, you know, we're also uh, on top of uh, the rules uh, for um, some of these uh, different investments and strategies. So um, I've been mentioning a lot to folks over the, uh, over the past handful of years. Uh, there was a, a law that passed that that says now when you take money out of a if you inherit an IRA, let's say, a lot of folks now can't just take a small percentage out every single year. The, a lot of folks used to be able to pull out maybe four percent or or five percent, uh, a much smaller percentage. Now that account has to be drained within 10 years, a lot of the times when you inherit it, if you inherit an IRA, let's say. So that's taxable income, big chunks of taxable income on top of your income if you're still working and, and or Social Security pensions, et cetera. That's the sort of stuff that a lot of folks don't even know that that's a law that was changed uh, a, a little while back. Um, and so... Um, and also with with this, uh, I was mentioning the the sunsetting of of um, uh, where our tax bracket might jump up here uh, or is going to is slated to in twenty twenty six. We may be going back to the years of deducting our mortgages, pro po uh, possibly. Uh, so it depends on if you know if what your mortgage looks like. So again, the folks that were in a rush to pay off their mortgage, what if now you get that deduction back uh, like we used to get? Um, does it make sense to pay it off if it's a small percentage and maybe now you're also getting to deduct that small amount of interest? Uh, so these are, you know, investment uh, planning and in our department, we do a lot of conversations with folks about much more than stocks and bonds. Um, it's it, and, and also um, I, I try to help folks uh, make sure that they're talking to their uh, uh, attorney to talk about, especially as I talk to them and, and they tell me about maybe um, they're, they're worried about one of their kids that may or may not be good financially um, or uh, um, or just about the amount of money that they're that they're going to have when we look at the projection and make sure that they that, you know, I'm, I'm helping them make sure they get to their attorney to do wills, possibly trusts, uh, power of, of attorney. Um, there's just a number of different situations uh, that that we're looking at. So you're, you're welcome to, um, my information is here. You're welcome to email me um, for any kind of questions you have, or, or if you want to have a projection or, or have any other uh, conversations you want to have. Um, also, I tend to send out uh, emails uh, uh, for folks every once in a while, I'll send out an email. I just sent out one to folks that are uh, in retirement, 70 and a half, or older about QCDs, and so for if there's anyone on the on the line that is uh, 70 and a half or older, um, you may not have never heard about a QCD. I'm letting those folks know because it's something that could save them on taxes, um, uh, or there might be a number of other topics that I send out periodically. So depending on, I I, I tend to send out um, info like that to retirees, 
And then to younger folks that are still in the workforce, I tend to send out other topics. So if you were interested in something like that, feel free to email me too, and I can um, send you some information uh, periodically on, on these different topics, which, which are uh, timely and important. Hey, hi, man. This is Chris again. I, and I see you're getting, a, getting to the end, but we do have a couple of questions in the chat that I just want to make sure we get to sure. here. Um, the first sure. one, or I'm going to combine a couple, but does the professional service offered at the ECU help with debt payoff strategy as part of financial planning needed to save or invest? And along with that, does BCU charge for their investment services? Yeah. Um, so BECU as a whole is pretty large. And um, so one of the nice things about that is, is we have different resources, different departments that do different things. So um, that rings to me a department, uh, our financial uh, special education specialist and our financial uh, department that deals with um, getting out of debt. Um, uh, you know, so if a person has um, uh, investments as well as debt, there might be something that I would look at, you, you know, but other times the focus is more on just getting rid of that debt. So you can really, especially at today's interest rates, you, you know, we're past the you know, 1% and 2%, you know, lo low interest rates. Now, if you have a seven or eight or 9% interest rate or even higher, I've, you know, 20, 15, 25%, there's a specialized department at BECU that can help with that. And again, I can, you know, I can help funnel you in the right direction if you just uh, email me. Um, so I'll, I'll take a look at, uh, you know, whatever a person's situation is and then figure out you know, whether it's uh, the best, if I'm the best person or if there's a better uh, department. Uh, over on the credit union side. And does BECU charge for their investment services? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, um, no. So any type of advice that I give, there is no charge. Uh, so I used to work at another company and we used to, you know, people used to pay us for financial plans. Um, when I when we do financial projections, we don't charge for those. Um, as far as advice too, just like one-on-one uh, -on -one advice, if, if I'm just even just giving advice, there's no charge for just general advice, no. Thank you. Another question, this might be more of this person reaching out to you directly, but what is the best strategy for FAFSA for students going to college in three years where parents need to save money without hurting the child's application? Yeah, that's that's become more compli uh, complicated over the years. And, you know, so I remember when I went to college, uh, one of the, I, I, they, they said that if you had money in Roth IRAs, don't worry about it. That doesn't count, you know, toward, towards some of the calculations. Well, it, it, lots of things have changed. Uh, so, um, I'm not an education specialist, uh, uh but we, we have, uh, different, again, different departments where, um, you have to look at where, where it's counted and where it's not counted and, and see if it, it makes sense to shift money around. Thank you, Jaime. Yeah. Thank you for attending. Thank you for joining us and, and for being a, a member of BECU. Thank you for, um, you know, for this presentation by BECU Investment Services. Um, we're very happy to um, continue providing education for the University of Washington and for uh, its employees and alumni. And um, do you have any closing thoughts here, Chris? No, uh, Jaime left his information there. I'll leave my information in the chat as well. I can help filter out if there's any additional questions. I can get those to people who can answer them or I can get them to Jaime directly. Um, we appreciate you guys being here. We I know we do this a few times a year, so we really appreciate you joining us. It really means a lot to us um, letting us help you with any of your financial questions. Thank you very much.